I agree. His name is Andy Raymond. His website, podcast, and everything else is Andy Raymond Unfiltered. He joins us again as he does on Wednesdays. Welcome back. Show, show time. Let's do it. Welcome, mate. Welcome. Uh, uh, just a, a heads up. I'm on my way to the airport. I've asked the Uber driver to pull over to the side of the road because I want to give you my complete attention. He, I said I'm doing a radio interview. He said, who we? I said, well, what Grant Fox did to Rugby Union, what Mark Graham did to Rugby League, Martin Devlin is to New Zealand Radio. So that's who I'm doing it with. Now pull over, shut up and let me talk. The man whose ego is in direct invert proportion to the size of his organ. One of them is huge, Andy. One of them, yeah. Yeah, the ego. All right, mate. Look, let's yeah, talk about sadly. the T20 cricket. The thing is, you're not in. So why are we talking to you about it? You're not in. And the world is celebrating because Australia missed out. But the funniest thing about the whole tournament is South Africa. How good was that? That was absolutely unbelievable. And, yeah, hilarious. Watching South Africa get beaten, like watching the Poms get beaten, it warms our hearts. For whatever reason, we just love it. I can tell you, Marty, over this side of the ditch... Um, everyone is checking their family lineage and their family tree to see if they've got any relatives in Greymouth or uh, cousins in South Auckland. We're on board. We're oh, black wow. and white tonight. Go on. We are black and white tonight. In fact, I'll go as far as saying every Aussie cricket fan is black and white all the way through to the finals. We would love nothing more, especially to beat Pakistan tonight. Although I don't think that will uh, that'll make my trip any better. What's him? What's him? Are you a <laughs> Pakistan or, or New... No, he's a Pakistani fan. Sure, of course he is. Wasim, Wasim Akram. He was probably named after him. Half the country was after Wasim. Absolutely destroyed Correct. the rest of the world in 92. We have a thing about playing Pakistan and cricket, mate. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is about them. They're our bogey team. It's a, isn't that a, an amazing concept? Because that happens in every sport or it happens in motor racing... And it goes on for generation after generation after generation. And there's no logic to it None. because the teams change, the personnel changes. But, yeah, there's a, there's a long history going back to the late 1980s of, of New Zealand losing the unlosable, getting done in, you know, in the final minute or, uh, you know, the final couple of overs against Pakistan I think you're good enough. And, and we questioned last week about uh, the aggression in the Kiwis outfit. That's still a query. But we also spoke about uh, England and, and how their timing looks perfect. I just wonder, I just wonder if you guys have been silently building to these two performances. And, and I, I think we can put a bit of merit in that. I've, I would love to think New Zealand has got the timing right. Andy Raymond, unfiltered. I hope so. Uh, there's also a bit of fear that we played our best game against you lot in the first game. Yeah. We haven't been as good since. And also England, you know, we didn't, we struggled against Ireland. England also pretty good. Sydney tonight, I see that there's some sort of thunderstormy weather around to start with and then it should all clear later. So hopefully we can actually get a full game. And the most disappointing thing would be that, it, you know, it's a rained out or it's a Duckworth Lewis. Yeah, exactly right. There's, I'm just looking at the radar here in Sydney at the moment. Slight chance of a shower along the coastal fringe in the afternoon uh, slash late evening. There's nothing. There, there are clouds around, but there is there's nothing on the radar right. at the moment. Right. So, right. so touch wood because I think uh, you know we've taken the Mickey out of New Zealand out of England for years about the weather. Well, we, we've lost the right to be able to do that. The weather has been atrocious over here. And to a large degree, I think it's it's robbed this T20 World Cup of some terrific games. Uh, I would hate to see a semi-final played over 14 overs or six overs or whatever junk they come yeah, up with. Yeah. Um, I, I would rather travel into state and do it tomorrow night, to be honest. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, and, and look, I know that they can't do that with the group matches, but surely for a semi-final, you would think. We track back, mate, to 1992 and that Cricket World Cup where we won every single match, last round robin match. Yep. We lost to Pakistan, which knocked you guys out. And I know that you had your yeah. conspiracy theories. And then Pakistan turned around in the semi-final and a guy called Inzaman Ol Huck broke our hearts. Now, for those of us who were around to watch that, it's 30 goddamn years ago. It's not T20, it's 50 over cricket, but we still... 
We still are hurt and burnt by it. This is what sport does. Sport's worse than the girl that breaks your heart, mate. Because what happens is that, you know, sport reminds you the whole time. Eventually you wake up in the morning and you forget about that angry old tart, don't you? But you don't about sport. You can't call them old tart. Sorry, well, mate. You Sorry, can, mate. but not you. to their Sorry, face because we're not that brave. No, no, never, mate. Um, no, it's, it's <clears> anyway, exactly she was right, right to we're... dump me anyway, mate. I mean, I'm an arsehole and she was right to dump me. I, I, I know that, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I know that. I know that, mate. <laughs> oh, I love it, Marty. Self self assessment at its absolute yeah. finest. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Let's talk Rugby League World Cup, though, uh, because this semi final this Saturday, you know, I suppose. The, you know, the tournament hasn't floundered along, but it hasn't really got going, has it? The, you know, the Poms did, you know, belted Samoa by 60. That's n- another semi final. You know, there's been a couple of little close games, including one quarter final, but the other three were just lopsided and one side. Oh, no, we struggled against Fiji a bit, but you kind of knew who was going to win. Now we're in the semi against you lot. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's no bigger rugby league fan than me. I've watched uh, literally a handful of games. Um, I think we've got to revisit the makeup and the format of the World Cup. I'm all for promoting second tier nations and supporting emerging nations, and I would love to see it, you know, really prosper. But the way we're going about it is the wrong way. I, I don't think it's been a flagship for rugby league, and that's what a World Cup should be. Yeah, that's a great. Okay, that's a great point to make. It isn't. It hasn't felt like a flagship. Like I, I kind of feel that there would be more overall interest in if England were playing Australia, or Australia were playing the old Great Britain, like they used to. If there was a tri nations between us three countries, or or maybe the five top countries, Samoa and Tonga, and there. But yeah, there are too many countries that you don't associate with the sport. I think that's the hardest thing for anyone who's neutral to think about. You know, I mean, Jamaica, Lebanon, look, welcome you all in. But maybe an A and a B division or something, or just make it over quicker because you know we've waited all this time to get to this stage, and it feels like the rest of it's irrelevant. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree. Really disappointing. Then we could talk about the rankings that uh, some may suggest have been uh, concocted to ensure England has the smoother passage through to the final, putting Australia and New Zealand on the same side of the draw. So, look, for me, there's a whole lot of things that need to be uh, need to be discussed and discussed at length. Not for the betterment of any country, for the betterment of the game. If this is the flagship, it hasn't been the flagship that I you know, expected. All right, so your team, Andy Raymond, unfiltered with us. And I, I urge you to jump the man's podcast. They're absolutely brilliant to listen to, mate. Uh, 229, it is on the platform. You know, when, when all the defections were happening, and I remember watching um, the press conferences with Mel Meninga, and he wasn't, you know, that phased by it. He was disappointed that people had told him really late, which was a bit rude, I thought, and I understood that. But you just know with Australian Rugby League, and we expect this of our of our All Blacks as well, that, hey, there's another cab right there. See how long that rank is? Just take the next one. Yeah. Yeah, look, look there's a positive, and that, that's, that's half-glass full mentality. There's the positive. There's probably 30 young Australian, New Zealand, Samoan, Tongan kids that wouldn't have got the, their name up in the bright lights had it not been for that. Uh, yeah, I do feel a bit sorry for Mal. I, I think he was ambushed by, by a lot of them and really surprised by a lot of them, as Michael Maguire would have been as well. So, uh, you know, a difficult one. I think that's a discussion for another day. And, gee, I think that's a difficult discussion to have. Eligibility rules, because it's got to start um, as young men, as emerging young footballers. You can't have Sonny Bill Williams playing for the New South Wales under-19s and then going on to play for New Zealand. You can't have Kevin Proctor playing for the junior Kiwis, then the Aussie schoolboys, then back to the, the Kiwis. Something's got to be done. Uh, it's got to be logical. It's got to be respectful. It's got to be community-based. But it's, it, it needs to be logical and it needs to be ironclad. Who was that Aussie? Who was the, I think it was a Brisbane Bronco that in consecutive World Cups played for you and played for us. Can you remember who that was? Uh, Brad Thorne, perhaps. You know, he played... He's talking Brad Thorne. No, he played for the... Rugby league and rugby union. Yeah, he played for the... I, 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 Tony... It might have been Tony... Was it Tony Carroll? Was it Tony... Tony Carroll, perhaps? Yeah. Sponsor, yeah. Yeah. It was just yeah. weird. It's just... It's a weird situation. Yeah. Look, at the same time, you know, we've spoken about this, and I, 
I support and respect the decision of of these young men who say, hey, look, you know, we might have been born and bred in Australia, but we've got big familial ties back to the islands and things. And, and you saw the comments from the, look, that Samoan Tongan quarterfinal, it was remarkable in a whole lot of ways. Both of them um, doing their ferocious um, you know, the I can't, I don't, I don't, what's this, Sepiti, I think it's called, um, beforehand. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's it, sorry, my, my bad there. And then, you know, embracing at the end was terrific. Look, three o'clock in the morning here, Otara and Mangari in New Zealand, yeah. there were there were crowds of people honking horns going on. I was in Wellington for the weekend. And I watched a whole lot before before the match took place in that Monday morning. And there's a whole lot of Tongan lads on those rented scooters with flags down their backsides, um, <laughs> jumping. Look, just you get you just get a kind of colour and love and feeling from the island nations and their supporters. That the rest, we're a bit kind of reserved for that kind of stuff. So I love what they bring. Yeah, I, I, I've I've loved the the emotion, the community spirit of it all. The Samoans, the Tongans, in particular. Um, you know, the scenes from from different parts of both those countries, the scenes in New Zealand and Australia of just how much it means to these these communities, I think has been fabulous, which is why we've got to embrace these second tier and emerging countries, nurture them along, help them along, but do it in a logical way. So uh, so some of these sides aren't getting toweled up by 50 or 60 in games that do no positive for anyone. Andy Raymond unfolded. All right, then, give us the two semi final predictions, and we'll start with the other one to start with. Because when you put 60 points on a side and you've lost 60 to 6, there must be in the back of your mind, we can't lose this game. We, we you know, there's just no, we, we aren't allowed to lose this game because of that opening result. I think Samoa beat England. Uh, I, I think in a terrific semi final. And I think the Kangaroos beat the Kiwis in, a, in an equally as good semi-final. Uh, I think two flagships, and, and, and they should both be good. And on the pod this week, what do we got, pal? Mate, Jesse Ramian from the Cronulla Sharks names his dream team. Cody Walker we catch up with. Likewise, Titans back row of Bo Firma. Big week. Excellent. Lovely talking to you as always. And we'll be back again next Wednesday. That's ARU Andy Raymond Unfiltered.